Hi everyone, my name is Josemary on behalf of GenScript and today we're interviewing iGEM team, King's College London. Uh, so can you please tell us more about your team and your project for iGEM 2021? Um, I think we could start off with some introductions. So my name is Alia. I'm this year's co-team leader alongside Luke. I'm a second year nutrition student currently at King's College London, and this is my second time doing iGEM. I'll pass on to Luke now. Oh, yeah. uh, hello, I'm Luke. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm a second year biochemistry student, and uh, as Alia said, I'm also coding the team alongside her. Um, I guess, Harsh, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm Harsh. I'm a uh, final year biochemistry student and I'm leading one of the subgroups in the team this year. And it's my second year doing iGEM. Hi, uh, I'm Adi. I'm a second year biochemistry student as well and I'm a new member of the team. Um, I'll introduce myself then. Um, hi, my name is Abigail or Abby. Um, this is my third year taking part in iGEM at King's College London. I'm a final year molecular genetics student. Uh, I was the team leader last year alongside Steph, and this year I'm serving as an instructor. And finally, hi, um, I'm Angela. I'm, I'm a first year neuroscience student. It, I'm one of the new team members. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, in that case, does anyone want to introduce what we've done this year, or I can go ahead and introduce what we do? Uh, okay, in that case, um, so this year, um, we are a phase two project leading on from uh, our last year's project, which was Renovate, which focused on um, the creation of a, a novel treatment for, for spinal cord injury. And um, it involved the development of a 3D biprinted caprolactone scaffold, which would bridge the gap um, in the lesion that's created in spinal cord injuries. And then at the same time, we've also uh, developed or planned on developing because we didn't have access to labs, unfortunately, last year, uh, an MFP muscle foot protein based bioadhesive, um, which would be used to encourage uh, adhesion of the cells of uh, the nerves that are growing in the scaffold um, to grow across the lesion, as well as provide support for the scaffold um, within the sort of lesion. Um, I don't know if someone wants to introduce what we're doing this year. I can I can continue on the um, MFP part. So. Last year, obviously, we could not get into the lab. Um, so our chosen protein, which is PVFP5 beta from Panaviridis, um, is a non-cytotoxic and non-immunogenic protein. And uh, a lab at King's uh, works quite specially with this protein. So we started working alongside them uh, with the guidance and stuff. Uh, this year, we plan on getting into the lab and polymerizing and synthesizing this protein alongside a competing protein of PVFP3. Um, last year, through some studies, we found that PVFP5 beta is quite uh, inherently disordered and unstable. So we plan on fusing it with a spider silk uh, spin, joint, spin joint protein to increase its adhesiveness as well as its stability. Um, so I can move someone else want to mention the bioprinting parts of the project. Otherwise, I can continue again. So since we're a phase two, we plan on actually developing a proof of concept. Uh, and obviously due to COVID, we could not get into the lab. This year, we plan on bioprinting our scaffold using polycaprolactone, as Luke mentioned. And um, depending on how far we get with our project, we do plan to coat it in the bioadhesive of the fusion protein that I mentioned earlier. And then we plan on doing um, in vitro studies to see if axonal regrowth is possible uh, in the lab. And the, the scaffold approach coated in the bioadhesive is typically for larger lesions uh, from, for spinal cord injuries. This year, we are developing a hydrogel for smaller lesions because the bioprinters, um, they don't have a small enough resolution to print a scaffold for smaller lesions. So we're developing a drug delivery system uh, in a hydrogel. Uh, and plan on releasing the CSPG, not sorry, no, CHABC enzyme, which I'm sure Alia can mention more about. Um, so in terms of the smaller lesions, what we wanted to do is expand the scope of our treatment and use CHABC, which degrades the glial scar and CSPGs, which are a extra um, molecular molecule that stops and inhibits regeneration. And so through CHABC, we, we hope to achieve axonal regeneration just by um, an injection. And this is something that 
um, our group is working in. So our project is divided into three subgroups, as you may have understood from our explanations. So we have the bioprinters who focus on the treatment of 3D bioprinting and then also the hydrogel. Then we have the muscle protein subgroup, which works with protein engineering and will also be working with CHABC. Um, because one of the limitations of using CHABC for smaller lesions is that it's not thermally stable. So this year we hope to optimize that to ensure that our not only is our treatment comprehensive, but it, it works properly and achieves axonal regeneration. And then we have the spinal cord injury group, which works towards um, characterizing the pathophysiology of SCI and making sure that um, the patient's well-being is prioritized, which I think, Angela, if you'd like to further elaborate on. Yeah, hi. As part of the spinal cord injury team member, we, alongside, um, before we have to find, we would be using the larger, um, the scaffold, uh, printed scaffold for the larger lesion, which we define as um, if the lesion is greater than three vertebrate. Um, if the lesion is smaller than three vertebrate, we're going to be using the hydrogel approach to um, load CHABC an enzyme into it and release it gradually, sustain, sustain, using sustained release over long term, over a long period of time. And we also want to focus on post rehabilitation and post -sur surgical um, uh, treat, uh, after the surgery. After the surgery, we plan to focus on rehabilitation in the sense of providing the patient, um, say, um, uh, stimulated, uh, sorry, uh, to give them uh, active, uh, uh, optimal um, environment and psychological state to help them recover. And that's mostly it for the brief summary of our project design. Um, and just like Angela was touching on, so we'd be looking at a really, really holistic design for the treatment and building on everything that we did in phase one. So not only are we looking at treating the, um, the patient, but also its post-rehabilitation um, well-being. Can you tell us more about the protein engineering aspect of your project, of what how will you be using synthetic biology to engineer the MFP protein? Um, so I think Abby would have a better idea. I'm, I'm drawing blanks right now. Um, so we're going to be building upon something that we looked into last year and then also taking some new approaches to firstly improve the adhesiveness or kind of just investigate the overall adhesiveness and stability of our chosen muscle flow protein PVFP5 beta, as well as uh, looking to um, increase the thermal stability of CHABC to make it more clinically relevant and have a greater clinical effect. Um, so with regards to the former, last year we looked into using a genetic algorithm known as IGAM, which was developed by the 2019 team in uh, Calgary, and we collaborated with them to adapt this algorithm for our protein. Um, although that's something that we're going to continue to look at, um, we not, we're not sure how um, applicable it is to our particular protein, uh, the muscle foot protein, but it can definitely be used for CHABC. Um, that's still something that we need to investigate a little bit further, but we are still planning to continue to build upon our previous work and upon the work of iGEM Calgary. Um, but with regards to our muscle foot protein, we are looking into consensus design and looking at the um, the evolution of muscle foot proteins in general to see where we can um, see which sequences and which residues we can use that have been uh, employed in other organisms to make our muscle foot protein more stable and more adhesive. So that's 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 what we're going to be doing in terms of um, of protein engineering uh, as of what we have right now. The main um, thing that we will be focusing on for our PVFP5 beta protein is actual purification and wet lab work because we were unable to do that last year. And last year we did more of the modeling and um, kind of more of the computational biology uh, with our protein. So this year we're hoping to do as much wet lab work with that as possible and to actually polymerize it um, in vitro. So that's just like a pretty brief summary. We're still building on our ideas for what we're going to be doing for CHABC, but we'll, we'll be definitely looking to improve the, the thermostability 
um, and we have to, we, uh, this will be a part of our human practices as well, is engaging with a variety of uh, protein biologists at our university to help um, to help guide our ideas as to how we can enhance that future of the protein. So it's something that it's still in progress, but we have some ideas as to how we're going to do that. Um, I don't know if Harsh, you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, I think you covered most of it. Um, but yeah, we're not overly depending on wet lab studies because we know it things are still quite uncertain. So as Abby mentioned, we uh, uh, plan to do the consensus sequence design to optimize the adhesive properties of uh, PVFP5 beta especially. Um, that's the dry lab study we're planning and obviously the fusion protein um, in vitro that I mentioned earlier. But Abby covered most of it. I know Abby mentioned that uh, you would be incorporate, you would reach be reaching out to uh, professors as part of your human practices. Uh, how is your team using human practices to bring awareness to your issue? So currently, what we're focusing on um, is reaching out to academics who can help expand the scope of our research. In terms of the bioprinting team, we've been looking into machine learning al algorithms in order to make a software that could allow us to distinguish what is a small lesion, what's a larger lesion, rather than looking at the vertebrae. And then alongside that, we've been reaching out to a lot of people for inclusivity research, which includes um, professors at our university who work with widening participation. And this has allowed us to not only elaborate on the, the ideas of what inclusivity research really is, but also follow through with the ethos of King's College London, which is widening participation to all fields of students and ensure that the scope of synthetic biology is increased. So this year we're working on a competition which um, is targeted for high school students. And through that, we're planning on working alongside the society at King's College London, which we founded last year, um, the KCL Biotech and Synthetic Biology Society. And in order to do that, we will be hosting this competition alongside iGEM um, teams. And that's something to look forward to, and that will be part of our, our in human practices later down the line. I also wanted to add that we're definitely going to be using social media to raise awareness about spinal cord injury as a whole and trying to interact with different associations um, that are like involved with spinal cord injury. So something that we did last year was we, um, we, we met with a bunch of uh, different people who have spinal cord injury and who conform the Spinal Cord Injury Association in the UK. And then we kind of discussed ways in which we could uh, help bring awareness to the problem and look for uh, solutions to spinal cord injury and kind of disability research as a whole that aren't scientific. So looking at more of like the societal view of, of the and representation with regards to spinal cord injury. So we will be taking the, well, like the information and the knowledge that we gained last year and then implementing that this year in our social media campaigns and, um, and also in our interactions with other types of stakeholders. So uh, like spinal cord injury researchers, uh, charities, as well as companies that develop, you know, biomaterial based products and seeing how can we like, how can we approach this from both the scientific and non-scientific um, view that is going to be most beneficial to those who have spinal cord injury and also helping um, to it, it, use social media to bring awareness to preventive, preventative measures, um, so safety in sport and um, like wearing helmets or different types of uh, like a scooter safety and so forth so that we can it, kind of tackle the problem from a variety of different angles that are both scientific, non-scientific and prevent, preventative. And just jumping off that point, um, we also hope to talk to more um, individuals in the industry because last year we focused a lot on academic and clinical human practices. So this year we want to integrate their perspectives on our projects, see if we can collaborate with startup companies that are working in similar fields like ours and hopefully develop partnerships in that way in order to develop our project design and make sure that it has a proper concrete foundation. Yeah, and for advice as to how we can scale up our therapy um, to make it something that would be widely accessible. So def definitely, just as Alia said, definitely interacting more with in industry um, and companies that, uh, that produce biomaterials and produce um, like these sort of products at a large scale. Um, so yeah. I think that's great that um, your team is reaching out to industry professionals 
uh, to see what this what this project might look like on a greater scale and have a greater impact globally. Well, iGEM King, King's College London, is there anything else you would like our audience to know about your project? Um, we are looking forward to this year and that we are hoping to create a project that will not only be something that we are proud of, but what the iGEM community and the synthetic biology community community can be proud of and look forward to. Um, we will not only be focusing on science, we'll be focusing on inclusivity research, entrepreneurship, so definitely a lot of fields that we will be investigating and further elaborating on. Um, and we, of course, will take the chance to plug our social medias. So um, follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, as well as our LinkedIn. Our YouTube will hopefully be launching soon, where we'll be doing videos in order to better our science communication and um, spinal cord injuries, synthetic biology, and iGEM in general. Um, and just like everyone else, we are currently fundraising. So um, our GoFundMe is linked on our Instagram. But um, in order to take part in iGEM, we need people to look into our project and understand that we're trying to fight for a good cause to better the world. Um, and if you guys want to help us, you can um, fund us through our GoFundMe. Well, thank you, King's College London iGEM for meeting with me today. Uh, best of luck in your project and best of luck in the iGEM Jamboree. Uh, reminder that the GenScript iGEM sponsorship is run completely on Twitter this year. And best of luck in our sponsorship competition as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so, Thank you much, so much for being with us. It was lovely to meet you. Bye, yes.